this. Good evening, everybody. I hope everybody are uh, doing well. So today we will be discussing a webinar on respiratory medicine. So most of the postgraduates and need PG aspirants who are interested in uh, respiratory medicine. So frequently ask me, sir, uh, what is this branch called as respiratory medicine? How should I approach the residency program? So once I get into residency, what are the things that I should at least learn? How should I prepare for uh, my university or DNB exams? And what are the exciting avenues after post graduation? Now, everybody says that there is a lot of scope for respiratory medicine. And we pulmonologists have came into limelight because of grace of COVID. So once there is a big havoc caused by COVID, now the whole world has known the importance of uh, the lung health and also pulmonologists. So maybe in the next 10 to 15 years, the branch called as pulmonology will be on par with all other top branches in medical field. And finally, sir, I have done my post graduation. I am wish to continue by doing some uh, fellowships, DM or write some European examinations. What is the guidance that you give to me? Now it will be more of uh, interactive, my dear, uh, uh, respiratory medicine postgraduates and also respiratory medicine aspirants. So anything that you want to know specifically from me, you can type your doubts on the chat box as and when necessary. Now, first of all, once you get into respiratory medicine residency students. So the first question as a postgraduate that you get is, uh, sir, uh, uh, I have not been exposed to uh, a respiratory medicine ward previously. So during my undergraduation, respiratory medicine was the toughest system to examine. And you might be also thinking that, uh, uh, sir, uh, I'm having some already uh, allergy, asthma, or some other respiratory disease. Will it suit to me? Now let us see uh, regarding respiratory medicine uh, residency. Let's see, all your uh, doubts regarding uh, respiratory medicine, I would like to clarify here. If anything is not covered here, you can just put it in the chat box. I will take each and every question personally and I will uh, clarify the issues here. So welcome to the world of pulmonology or respiratory medicine, pulmonary medicine, whatever is the name. The thing we do is to repair your uh, lungs, to heal your lungs, to treat your lungs. As a first year postgraduate, primary thing is this is the only time that you get uh, to go through all the clinical manuals. Once you get into your super specialization or you become a good practitioner, you will not have sufficient time. So you should get the basics right. So we have beautiful clinical manuals such as Golwala, Hazarika for respiratory uh, examination then try to learn uh, clinical examination findings the more you do the better you will know now i see some of the postgraduates uh, unable to uh, identify bronchial breathing and uh, especially in few peripheral colleges when we uh, reach out there to conduct some exams so they still have that uh, confusion sir is it uh, tubular is it cavernous is it uh, amphoric See, everything comes by practice only students. Nobody can become a master overnight. The more you practice, the more you will know. Then coming to the procedures that a first year postgraduate should thoroughly know is thoracentesis. Day in and day out in the center that I work, at least four to five plural effusion cases we will be seeing in our ward. So mostly in uh, high uh, output centers, you would see many plural effusions. Make sure you are doing the thoracentesis process uh, without any complications. And tomorrow also, this is the only procedure that you can do in your uh, OP setup because all other procedures at least require uh, a emergency department or uh, 
a IP setup. So thoracentesis, diagnostic at least, you should be able to confidently do. And ICD insertion. And by first year, you should be thorough on uh, how to handle an ICD. So when to put it, when to remove it, and how to monitor the ICD output and uh, seeing the air leak and comparing the serial X-rays. And whenever required, pleurodesis through ICD. So whatever pleurodesis that you are using, let it be doxycycline, let it be talc slurry. And these are the plural procedure that a first year postgraduate should thoroughly know and it has to be done as per the guidelines. Now somebody uh, mentions that, sir, I can do ICD insertion, I can do thoracentesis easily. But what is the guideline that I have to follow? So if you open British Thoracic Society, there you will have beautiful guidelines for thoracentesis ICD insertion. Then next, uh, the bread and butter for any pulmonologist ultimately. Now day in and day out, if I sit in my OPD, let it be 10 or 20 cases I see, about 80 to 90%, about 80 to 90% cases. So this I am telling out of my uh, 10 years experience students, 80 to 90% cases coming to OPD will be having any one of this. It can be either asthma, COPD, TB or some lower respiratory tract infection. So for this, some basic knowledge of the disease, how to treat it appropriately, how to diagnose it will be sufficient. For asthma, the Xena guidelines, you can just uh, type the word Xena in Google and you can get the recent guidelines. For COPD, you have gold guidelines and for tuberculosis, our country has a national tuberculosis elimination program. So when you want to do a practice very well in future, make sure you thoroughly know how to diagnose and treat these three respiratory diseases. Then coming to the physiology part that what you should know and the pathology part, I always feel uh, for a clinician that his or her knowledge of physiology should be very good. So only if you know the physiology and pathology properly, you can treat the patient very well. So that's why in the first year itself, make sure your physiology and pathology are properly done. So for physiology, respiratory physiology, Guyton is a good book. And if you have time, you can also follow West Physiology. West Physiology. And for pathology, I still feel, even though it is respiratory pathology, Robbins is a very, very good book. So what I want all the first year postgraduates is first to go through the BTS guidelines for thoracentesis ICD insertion. Make sure you are doing it in the correct manner. Make sure you are doing it in a safe manner. Then I want you to strengthen your physiology and pathology. For physiology and pathology, you can refer any of these books, Guyton, West or Robbins. The next important for a first year postgraduate will be interpreting chest x-ray. So for chest x-ray reading, uh, the famous book that we have is uh, Felsen. So Felsen is a very good book for chest x-ray. For CT chest, we have a book by name Web. So there is Web CT chest. Uh, it will uh, give you great information regarding all CT chest and spirometry. Generally, the uh, volumes of the books available are uh, very high. So you have so many pages on spirometry in most of the books, but best is for spirometry. So you yourself start interpreting the reports and there are uh, Indian guidelines given by Indian Chess Society. You can find it in Lung India, Indian guidelines for spirometry. So there you will have the information in a nutshell. So no need to uh, spend a lot of time studying all the volumes regarding basic spirometry. So you can follow the Indian guidelines for uh, spirometry, which is given in uh, Lung India. So it is a, uh, a a good conceptual material so about 10 to 15 pages so these are the things as a first year postgraduate that you should know 
so you should know how to do basic procedures you should know the physiology you should know the pathology regarding asthma copd tb you should be thorough regarding the zena gold ntep guidelines and chest x-ray you can go through felsen or any book on uh, chest radiology so you can go through so that you will have a systematic approach so how to read a chest x-ray in a very systematic manner then ct chest there is web and noidage and spirometry you can go for the indian guidelines for spirometry it has been given uh, by the indian chest society available uh, in lung india then coming to interventions so thinking about interventions apart from plural procedure simple plural procedures we have uh, thoracoscopy so scope is the new hope bronchoscopy and icu procedures such as intubation the central line so these are generally done by uh, your second year or third year pgs so once you know the basics very well try to observe how your seniors or your faculty are doing these icu procedures thoracoscopy bronchoscopy so once you observe this by second year uh, end or third year beginning you will be given an opportunity to do this see let us uh, make sure that we touch most of the aspects of respiratory medicine so you start from simple procedures know the relevant uh, uh theory regarding those procedures so in first year itself you study regarding thoracoscopy also you will be having uh, so many pdfs available thoracoscopy indications how is the procedure performed and what are the complications again for bronchoscopy also there is indian guidelines and regarding icu procedures so how to intubate and uh, how to handle the endotracheal intubation and mechanical ventilation first make sure in the first year the theory is very good from second year and third year you can practice then coming to approach to university exams so once you have learned all this in your uh, post graduation ultimately you have to give an exam once you give an exam then only you can write your degree beside your name so for me for university exam i have followed this theory for theory exam topic based approach so what i have done is i have taken last 5 to 7 years question papers so not uh, beyond that last 5 to 7 year question papers so you must be knowing for uh, md or dnb there will be four papers generally so there will be four papers each paper will be having 10 questions each or it might be modified so ultimately for uh, one year uh, there will be two sessions let it be md or dnb dnb two sessions and even md also regular exam and also supplementary exam so if you can get last 5 to 7 question papers and i always want a post graduate to go through a systematic manner suppose uh, uh, you are having a question on osa uh, suppose this was how i prepared for recent dnb exam so what i have done is uh, i have uh, taken all the 5 to 7 year question papers and i have divided it into topic wise so whatever question i see under osa i used to write under osa now see here under osa you have complications of obstructive sleep apnea central sleep apnea obesity hypoventilation diagnosis complex sleep apnea home sleep testing cause of central sleep apnea so when i have prepared uh, a curriculum like this i used to keep 5 uh, days for one disease so now if i start osa i used to make sure i completed this topics at least because when you start studying uh, your fishman or murian nodel which are the theory books for respiratory medicine so fishman so these are the theory textbooks or murray and nadel so these are uh, books of huge volume and it might be very difficult for you to revise it so what i have done is uh, i not only tried having knowledge from these textbooks books i also made sure i was able to uh, represent these in my theory exam i was able to represent these in my theory exam so what i have uh, done was uh, i used to make like this so uh, last 5 years question papers i used to take and i used to go see what were the topics uh, under osa then uh, another example suppose uh, you want to study ards and sepsis so already you must be you should make a list like this so if you want for dnb students 
so i have list made up to 2021 question papers okay last five years from 2016 17 18 19 20 21 so i just studied only this to clear dnb exam so i wrote dnb exam after seven years of my post graduation so my completed my post graduation in 2015 I wrote it in uh, 2020, 21 and 22. So I actually experimented whether this approach will be really helpful. And uh, I got very good marks in uh, DNB theory and also in practical exam. So it actually worked. So uh, this is a smart way of preparing. So make sure you are uh, studying topic wise instead of question paper wise. So you spend one or two days just writing down all the questions belonging to those topics so that your job will become very very easy while preparing and make sure you are making uh, some simplified notes so only if you make notes you can revise it very easily prior exams because uh, uh, most of the uh, things that we have in textbooks nowadays comes with more references and uh, more citations so reading all those references will and representing in exam will be very difficult for you. So you cover the questions and make a very crisp note so that you can represent it in your final theory exam. Then coming to practical exam. So this is where we fear the most. So you might be very good in theory. I'll see students who are speaking about airway stenting, who is speaking about bronchial thermoplasty, uh, bronchial vapor ablation all those but when comes uh, when it comes to tidal percussion when it comes to the drop space when it comes to showing the respiratory movements its demonstration they are unable to do so this is the biggest problem for uh, every resident so theory wise they are having more knowledge than their uh, consultant uh, also because knowledge now has become uh, what you uh, has become available everywhere so if you take your uh, uh, mobile phone and uh, you type for anything you can get the information within seconds and it is very easy for these uh, generation students to also memorize that but the problem arises especially in your uh, practical exam so usually for uh, any practical exam let it be dnb practical exam or your md practical exam for respiratory medicine most important will be the long case so once the examiner is satisfied by presentation of your long case is done good means you are 100 percent pass so if you do your long case very well you are 100 percent pass then depending upon the universities some organize two short cases some give three short cases if it is DNB, 100 marks virtual OSCE. Again in DNB, if you can score 70 marks out of 100 in virtual OSCE, which is a generally a theory-based exam. So even though they call it as practical, all the questions you have to answer in theory. So this is if you can have a good strike rate, you can get 70 marks out of this 100 virtual OSCE, you will easily pass. And afternoon, most of the uh, universities and also DNB board organize uh, oral examination, the viva was, which include showing you chest x-rays, asking you to interpret ABG, uh, polysomnography, basic CT scans, instruments, and PFTs. So I feel that uh, this viva was is not that advanced. Most of the examiners will be stressing on basic things only. The problem with the residents these days is they know everything advanced, they forget their basics. So this is where you will find it difficult to answer because you may not be reading those basics properly. So practical exam approach is very simple. There will be a long case, short case, virtual OSCE if you want to give DNB exam and there will be viva was covering uh, these aspects chest x-ray abg polysomnography ct chest instruments pfts now this uh, approach to practical exam putting my experience of 10 years of teaching i am bringing you a respiratory medicine resident practical course for both md and dnb so this consists of uh, commonly asked topics in your uh, practical exam so abg symptomatology helpful for your uh, 
case discussion, clinical examination videos. I will also bring out some live case discussions from the participants so that you will have an uh, rehearsal before uh, giving a uh, real case discussion in front of examiners. We will also discuss polysomnography basics, pulmonary function test uh, basics and also I am going to discuss 50 virtual OSCE which will be covering all the important topics in respiratory medicine so that DNB students and also MD students who want to write DNB practical exam so you can pass easily in those practical exam so we will discuss important chest x-ray and CT chest spotters and if at all you are writing exam in a government college tuberculosis will cover about 60 to 70 percent of uh, questions that an examiner ask in your exam. So I am going to deal with all the tuberculosis update and frequently asked instruments regarding inhalers, nebulizers. So this will be both live and recorded. So case discussion generally will be live and other theory topics will be recorded. So the course will be for two months duration. So the course is for two months. Validity will be for six months actually. So once you subscribe, so you can uh, watch the course for six months. So the course is going to start this Wednesday at 9.30 p.m. So that is 8th February 2023. So this is the first edition. So we'll make sure we are going to complete all those topics in two months and uh, next four months you can revise it so that you can give your uh, practical exam with more confidence students. Then uh, see, I, I'm a person who is more practical. So what I have done for my DNB examination practicals same thing I am going to share you uh, share with you in this course. So this was my result recently in DNB practical exam and surprisingly when I worked in a smart way this total was much more than what I got in my post graduation about seven years ago. So actually this approach works and to prove it works I have written the DNB, uh, DNB exam recently so that I can impart more confidence to the students. Then this will be few virtual OSCEs in respiratory medicine. So especially for DNB residents, maybe in future, even MD residents, they might have this virtual OSCEs. So they'll give you a clinical scenario with images. Suppose, uh, for example, this is a 64 year old female with history of mantle cell lymphoma, stem cell transplantation presented with cough and chest pain. CT chest was performed. She was admitted shortly after this examination and three days later the tissue diagnosis was made with CT guided biopsy. Answer the following questions. They will just give you clinical history. They will not ask, uh, they will not ask you uh, as an MCQ. They will ask you as a theory base. They will ask you to describe what is happening. So what is the CT chest finding? So can anybody answer what is this uh, CT chest finding? So you have central white, peripheral less white. So this is the classical CT halo sign. And the questions will be like this only. Uh, they'll ask mention four risk factors, mention three reasons. Like that they'll give you on based on numbers, four risk factors for this disease. Generally immunocompromised, it can be prolonged neutropenia, some organ transplant patients, HIV or some primary immunodeficiency, something like that. And what are the microscopy findings? So especially when it is an infection, the examiners are particular regarding microscopy finding. So you can see a septate fungal hyphae. So these are the septate fungal hyphae and acute angle so whenever it is septate and acute angle branching it is nothing but uh, aspergillus fumigators and what is the organism responsible as you know this is ct halo sign characteristic of invasive pulmonary aspergillosis so because there is uh, some uh, immunocompromise so there is organ stem cell transplantation and treatment of choice will be Oriconazole. So this will be the pattern of questions that they generally ask. So this will be the pattern of questions that you generally get 
in DNB virtual OSCE. Okay, so they'll ask you what is the CT finding, the risk factors, indirect question, describe the microscopy finding. So here, first you should know that this belongs to invasive pulmonary aspergillosis. So then only you can answer all these questions. So all this virtual OSCEs, 50 virtual OSCEs, based on my experience, I will uh, try to cover the common respiratory diseases so that you will uh, have no issue in completing your practical exam. Then coming to fellowship or DM, sir, now I have completed my uh, respiratory medicine post-graduation. Should I go to a fellowship or should I go to DM pulmonology, DM cardiology or DM infectious diseases? See students, it all depends where you want to settle down. So if you are coming back to your hometown, so where there is uh, not sufficient facilities, so just a simple fellowship will be sufficient. So if you have not learnt basic uh, interventional pulmonology procedures, but you want to settle down in a city where there are all the facilities and you want to do all the advanced procedures, then it's again your choice is it a fellowship in an advanced center or doing dm pulmonology ultimate winner is always your hard work and skill then the next question students ask me sir i just passed my pulmonary medicine post graduation is the competition very tough can i do it and can i crack dm so this was one of my student who has recently cracked his uh, DM uh, pulmonary medicine. I am very much uh, thankful for his gestures. He has mentioned that uh, he has followed my notes and he added some points. So with that he could uh, gain AIR All India rank 1 in uh, INI SS pulmonary medicine. So by the, seeing this I feel that if you work hard, if you work hard and if you have some skill you can easily crack DM exam also. So you have traveled this much distance. You have uh, completed your MBBS, completed your post-graduation. Now getting into DM, it is difficult but not impossible. If you try hard, you can definitely get into DM. If you need any key uh, guidance, you can ask me at any point of time. Then a uh, few students asked me, sir, what about this uh, European diploma in adult respiratory medicine? So again, uh, many students were asking me. So I wrote this exam this year. I cleared it successfully so that I can guide my students. So this is uh, again a three hour exam and 90 questions will be there. And it is a completely MCQ based question. And very important here is it will be case based MCQ. It will be something similar to the virtual OSCE of DNB pattern, but there will be MCQs. So they will be giving options A, B, C, D, E, and you have to choose the right option. So, what is the advantage if you are applying for a job in corporate hospital? It can boost your CV. And if you want to attend some observership in Europe, if you have done European diploma in adult respiratory medicine, they will be very happy that this person knows our practice guidelines and you can get access very easily into that fellowship. And nowadays, the lung transplant fellowship is gaining a lot of popularity in our country. If you do this European diploma in adult respiratory medicine, it will be very helpful. Our uh, Indian Chess Society every year, see, uh, out of uh, all the bodies in our country, we have our Indian Chess Society, which is very, very supportive and which is very, very good for uh, uh, postgraduates. So you can enroll into Indian Chess Society. You can get the Lung India book, which is an excellent source of information for postgraduates. And you can also get recent updates regarding conference, regarding Hermes. So they are very supportive people. I request all the postgraduates to get enrolled into Indian Chess Society. And our Indian Chess Society actually conducts every year this Hermes exam. It also conducts a training session which will be again very helpful. So if you attend the training session and if you follow their uh, uh, preparation material, so one will be their ERS text, uh, uh, 2019 textbook is the recent ones. So it is about uh, 600 to 700 pages. 
very good information from the textbook and there is another book having round about uh, 100 to 150 questions uh, self assessment so these two were uh, my source of preparation i could uh, clear the exam by god's grace and support of everybody then coming to exciting avenues in pulmonology sir now we have done uh, md pulmonary medicine so what are all the things that we can explore further now see here uh, previously when uh, somebody sees a pulmonologist they thought that our life was uh, very easy and boring so they used to say that so what will you do you will just put your steth and you will auscultate uh, wheez or crepitations and you will just take a chest x-ray and you will visualize is there consolidation or cavity and you will just prescribe so you will prescribe either an inhaler called porocot or tablet called porcox so in 2012 people used to mock at me so what is pulmonology either porocot an inhaler or porcox anti-tubercular therapy now this is not the practice that we do nowadays all this has become myth now what is the state of art state of art is the interventional pulmonology now scope is the real hope in the hands of a pulmonologist so with that scope you have so many procedures thoracoscopy pleuroscopy then we have ebus cryobiopsy rigid debulking transbronchial lung biopsy endobronchial biopsy tbna and if you are well versed, there is bronchial thermal vapor ablation, there is bronchial thermoplasty. There are so many procedures in hands of an interventional pulmonologist. So previously it was only two options, either forocot or forcox. Now we have all these avenues awaiting you. Then these are the exciting avenues like I told you. Either you can become a good interventional pulmonologist so by doing your thoracoscopies and bronchoscopies confidently or you are interested in sleep medicine sleep medicine is an exciting avenue or you are interested in allergy so allergy and immunotherapy also fellowships are available throughout our country i did my fellowship in allergy and clinical immunology from savita university and fellowship in interventional pulmonology from sparsh hospital ahmedabad <clears throat> apart from this if you want to go into critical care you have uh, courses such as fnb critical care idccm for critical care or you have dm critical care now the trend is towards interventional pulmonology for interventional pulmonology we are having very good hospitals in our countries they are offering six months fellowship and also 12 months fellowships so this is a group that I have made for respiratory medicine uh, residents for our country. So it is uh, available in uh, Facebook. So you can just type this name in your uh, Facebook search bar, respiratory medicine residents group. So you will have all the recent updates uh, regarding conferences. So whatever I know, I will update there. And uh, there are so many other uh, consultants who would like to share their experiences here so just follow this group so you will have an idea what exactly is recent in respiratory medicine so with this i would like to conclude my session and now it is open for discussion so as i told you to make your life easier this is the resident practical course that i am going to start in the next week and these are the topics that I am going to cover. So once this uh, course is done, I'll also try to do something for uh, theory exam. So I'll try to complete individual diseases such as asthma module, COPD module, bronchiectasis module, ILD module, so that it will give you a uh, crisp notes to, uh, to write your final exams. So I hope uh, my talk was uh, helpful in clarifying your uh, doubts regarding the branch and what are the avenues how to prepare for theory exam and practical exam so any doubts that you would like to ask me you can type in the chat box
Dr. Krishna, I joined in Government Medical College, no thoracoscopy or bronchoscopy. Can I learn with this, sir? Uh, see, this, uh, this course is only directed for your uh, practical course to complete your exam. So, this is a resident prep to your final exam. So, it does not give you training in procedures. So, all these procedures as a part of workshops. So, definitely, I will uh, organize few workshops or I will be part of workshops in the future. So, I'll give you information you can attend. So, this resident practical course is particularly designed so that you can uh, write your practical exams with uh, more confidence. So, in practical exam, they are not going to demo ask you to demonstrate or ask you to do thoracoscopy or bronchoscopy actually. Okay. So, this thoracoscopy and bronchoscopy, you can attend conferences, you can attend pre-conference workshops. So, there we will guide you how to do it. Yes, good evening, Dr. Vasavi Cheguri. So, Aniruddha, uh, actually, uh, when I was in my post graduation, so I selected a few topics from Fishman. I studied a few topics from Murray and Nadel, Crofton, and also a few topics from uh, ERS, European uh, uh, Respiratory Society book was there. Say Fishman, actually all topics are not uh, exam friendly. You have to choose a few topics from Fishman, few from Murray and Nadel and few from Crofton. See, bronchiectasis, lung abscess, empyema is excellent in Crofton. So, if you come to pneumonia, uh, Murray and Nadal is good. Respiratory failure, pneumothorax uh, is very good in uh, Fishman. So, uh, M. Hassan, I am doing NBA diploma. And how to crack the entrance for the same? See, post diploma DNB, you have to give that uh, entrance exam and most probably it will be an MCQ pattern of uh, exam. MCQ pattern of exam. I hope if you can uh, go through the recent MCQs, it will be very easy to crack. So, there are so many uh, my students who have done their... Uh, uh, DTCD and later got into DNB also. So what they have done is uh, after completing their diploma, they have taken a break for uh, six months. They have prepared once again. Uh, they have gone through all the MCQs and they have given the exam. Sir, so Vasavi Cheguri, uh, can you please guide me regarding fellowship courses to do in abroad? See, frankly speaking, uh, Dr. Vasavi, right now, India is the epicenter for most of the interventional pulmonology fellowship courses. I see people coming from other countries and uh, doing in India. So, if you want to learn basic interventional and advanced interventional pulmonology, we have so many institutes in India. So, especially in uh, South India, Eshoda Hospital and also Amrita Hospital is doing a great job. No, sir, I want to go to abroad. Then you have in Malaysia, then you have in France. So, but somebody has to refer you from India to go there. So, if they will see your, uh, whether you had uh, some basic training. So, get basic training in interventional pulmonology from India and get a referral letter from there. You can easily gain access. So, right now, the main center for interventional pulmonology procedures in, is in India only. So, you have some abroad fellowships in France, you have in Malaysia, there are few people who have done it in Japan, Tokyo, they have gone to Germany, they have also gone to China. Now, all these people have their own centers spread throughout the country. So, make sure you are uh, first getting your basic interventional pulmonology here, okay? Yes, best interventional pulmonology centers to learn. So, in the south, I feel uh, Yashoda is very good. Amruta is very good. Okay. So, they have their uh, six months fellowship courses, one year fellowship courses.
see when i was uh, dr uh, krishna ganthan when i was in my md when i completed my md also so i had uh, not much exposure to icu and my institute at that time 2012 to 2015 uh, bronchoscopy got repaired and thoracoscopy was new to india so my position and your position will be very similar once you complete md but good thing now you have uh, so many conferences uh, offering you hands on training on these procedures so you don't worry you can uh, complete your md so you will be just similar to me mr uh, dr uh, krishna ganthan so even i did not have much exposure to interventional pulmonology and icu all this in my one year fellowship and later by practice i have learned so don't worry just complete your uh, md degree complete your uh, practical exam so then you can apply for fellowship and you can get all this done if it is unavailable in your hospital if it is available in hospital then you have to learn okay so if i have solved all your queries i think it is uh, time we say goodbye for today and you can contact me at any point of time uh, on the facebook or instagram so you can type my name so this is my insta bharat underscore lung doc so wasim fatima uh, where can we see we don't have a list by any official body like i told you so you can just uh, go to their uh, what you call official website and you can uh, search for their uh, interventional pulmonology courses so we don't have actually an official list so you stay in touch with me just i'll gather information from uh, throughout the country and i will try to make a list where are all the interventional pulmonology courses available so vikram kapoor does stand alone diploma have scope or is it post diploma dnb necessary in respiratory medicine so i'll give you a very good example there is a very famous pulmonologist in south india who has uh, done diploma in uh, respiratory medicine but he will be the mandatory speaker in all conferences because he had put in lot of hard work and skill it all ultimately depends upon your hard work and skill when patient is coming to your clinic or hospital how good you are treating him with your knowledge and when the patient is uh, coming to you for your operation theater for a procedure how good you are doing it safely without any complication so maybe after your name you are having 10 degrees but you are not confident in doing a procedure it doesn't make sense okay so good evening sir i want to ask what all the instruments will be discussed here sarvendra vikram skin see i am going to discuss the basic uh, inhalers so what is dpi what is mdi uh, what is this new synco breath various nebulizers will be discussed pfr will be discussed and the basic anatomy of bronchoscope thoracoscope uh, endotracheal tube those are the instruments that we are going to discuss okay okay then so we will conclude this session thank you and all the very best i would like to see more postgraduates enrolling for the course and getting benefited